My friend Peter Bogosian had a great tweet uh, earlier this week that sparked a lot of debate. And, and I'll read it straight away and give my response. Uh, uh, he says, The conservative preoccupation with children at drag shows is indicative of a party-wide crisis, the absence of a positive vision for the country. Say what you will about AOC, but she has a positive aspiration for America that goes beyond hating the other side. Uh, as you might imagine, this has caused controversy. Uh, it caused some debate. Uh, and I'd like to weigh in uh, as a friend of Peter, but as also a gentle critic of this idea. Um, well, first of all, first of all, I'd actually like to acknowledge where I think Peter is right. Um, in, in a sense, conservatives are uh, temperamentally and then maybe philosophically out of step with the a kind of dominant structure of society. Uh, our society is structurally progressive in two ways. First, in a real way that is undoubtable. We've seen tremendous technological progress. Um, and so technology changes, it advances, it changes everything that we do, uh, all of our experiences. Um, but it's also created a second expectation of progress, which is the expectation of moral or civilizational progress. And I think it also verges on even kind of a utopianism, not just in technology, which is, you know, kind of the, the utopian drive towards everlasting life that you see in Silicon Valley, but actually a utopian vision towards either a socialist society or a perfect technologically driven society or a kind of biologically transcendent society where we can change human nature in order to perfect uh, humankind. Um, you see this at kind of the uh, TED Talk kind of ideology. Conservatives, though, take a different tack. Conservatives have a hard time navigating this, this idea of kind of permanent technological progress, um, uh, which, of course, there should be skepticism, might not be permanent. We've seen, of course, technological progress uh, wane and fall over time in previous eras. But conservatives really are deeply skeptical of and, and even uh, oppose the notion that human nature can be uh, uh, transcended, uh, that society can be rapidly transformed into infinite progress towards a social or human utopia. And so conservatism means, in a real sense, the setting of limits. It means, in a sense, saying no. Uh, it means, in a real sense, of trying to um, restrict things uh, or, or, or slow down the pace of change where it's not prudent, it's not good, and it doesn't actually lead to more human happiness. And so in the case of drag shows, I think what Peter is noticing is that is a flashpoint for a huge and real fight. Um, I've been, of course, a participant in this fight. I wrote a long essay for City Journal outlining the ideology that drives Drag Queen Story Hour. But I think Peter misses two points. Um, first off, I think that he misses uh, the fact that the fight over Drag Queen Story Hour is only a surface level fight that is really a symbol of a much deeper intellectual and cultural fight. Um, it's my view, and I think I have substantiated this view through a, this long uh, essay citing the academic sources, citing the historical sources, that Drag Queen Story Hour is an ideological vehicle for the larger movement of academic queer theory that seeks explicitly, in their own words, to um, transgress the uh, heterosexual family norms, um, kind of uh, to break down middle-class expectations for sexuality and reproduction uh, and, and, and relationships, and also to pursue this Michel Foucault-style transgression of sexual boundaries. And you see this all over in the literature. They're trying to say, well, we want to create a sense of sexual tension, a sense of queer pleasure, a sense of play uh, between the adult male transvestite, the drag queen, and then the child who is in the audience, whether it's through literature, through performance, through sexual exhibition, etc. And then what we're seeing is in many cases a very explicit sexual performance, uh, simulating sex acts, the exposure of a kind of strip tease shows with the exposure of uh, synthetic or prosthetic uh, breasts and genitalia, um, lap dances on, uh, on, on, on other adults in the, uh, in the view of children, things that would be um, uh, more at home in a kind of strip club environment than, you know, grandma's coming to Timmy's kindergarten class to read, uh, you know, give a mouse a cookie. You know, so you have this uh, double game that's being played. Well, it's just Drag Queen Story Hour. We're just reading books. You know, you lay off, relax. 
Um, but actually, the not only the performance, um, but actually the ideological messaging that's embedded within it is something that is really deeply threatening to people because it explicitly and very openly says we're going after uh, uh, the kind of sexual manners and mores of most middle class people in this country. We have to actually destroy the system of what they called heteronormativity, which is a fancy word for saying uh, the basic orientation of most people uh, uh, throughout history, including our own time, the basic method of natural reproduction. Um, and we're going to actually destroy it in favor of what they call queer normativity in favor of dismantling um, uh, childhood innocence. They've written papers on this, how drag queen story hour and queer pedagogy can actually uh, dismantle childhood innocence and create you know, a, a site of uh, uh, desire and pleasure between adult and child in these institutional settings. And so there's two things. Um, first of all, setting a limit, pushing back the boundaries on this is in itself a good. Um, it's not simply a, uh, an, an overreaction or a moral panic. It actually represents something that is important for people to say, hey, you know what? Um, these are our public institutions. These are our public school classrooms where they're performing a lot of these uh, drag queen story hours. Um, and and, and these are, this is our neighborhood, our community, our culture. We want to say, um, in one sense, um, of course, we want all kids uh, gay kids, lesbian kids, uh, uh, young adults to feel uh, accepted, to feel welcome, to feel validated for who they are as human beings, to feel like they're treated equally. But that's one thing. It's quite another thing to say, we want to have grown adult men wearing women's clothing, um, simulating sex acts in front of small kids. You know, that's crossing the line. We don't want that. We actually want to create a prudent limit to that. The second thing, though, and maybe conservatives, maybe in, in Peter's defense, we have to actually do a better job as conservatives communicating this. The second thing, though, is that this defense, this protection, this limit setting is in defense of positive values, of positive institutions, of deeper principles. It's not merely about uh, hating, you know, drag queen story hour. It's not driven by hatred at all. Um, I think it's actually just the opposite. It's driven by a deeper love for the institutions, for the principles, for the people that matter. To say, hey, you know what? Um, childhood innocence does matter. Uh, you know what? Um, you can kind of trash most, pe most middle class people's family arrangement as, you know, uh, compulsive uh, phallologocentrism or uh, evil heteronormativity, but that's actually just the basic and natural building block of, of life and society for most people. Um, and you know what? You can't hijack public institutions um, to try to degrade that, to try to discredit that, to try to dismantle that. These things actually matter for most people. They may not know all of the fancy queer theory terms. They may not think of it in those terms, but they can sense intuitively that that having these performances uh, is designed to uh, undermine what they're doing in an already fragile family environment. And then second, I think conservatives trying to say, you know what, we're fighting against political and cultural chaos in many, many domains, um, but we're fighting for those deeper institutions that really matter. And so uh, uh, it, it, taking Peter's point very generously, what I think we have to do as conservatives, not just to expose what's happening on the other side as, as wrong, uh, as, as, as uh, a, a kind of outrage, but we actually have to do a better job of communicating the positive principles and values and institutions that we're defending. Uh, and in that, in that case, although I think Peter is mistaken in at least two important ways, uh, I think his critique is important and we can do a better job so that when Peter sees the narrative on the conservative side uh, and, and, and people who are maybe in that kind of middle of the road domain, they can actually see that we're not just attacking, but we're actually defending something that really is meaningful.